Welcome to Morikarta. This game was gifted to me for free. I like checking out, you know, a bunch of different card games, roguelikes. This one caught my attention. So, let me show it off. As a note, I was going to wait until I had actually did a run that was successful before posting a video of it, but the game is so hard that uh, I cannot do that anymore, suffice it to say. So let's, let's put it this way. We're going to just put out this run and, you know, whether it's good or not, unless it's terrible, but like, it's you my, my games usually are pretty competitive it should showcase how hard the game is right now the game is has a mixed review on steam because pretty much because of how difficult it is you're going to find some way to lose look trust me on that all right uh you know i'm pretty good at card games and this is kind of a roguelike like slay the spire uh, i'm pretty good at that too so we'll start with the main basic class the scholar uh this is like the natural way that this looks most familiar but there are uh, many different classes uh, so your starter deck is always the same you've got research flame one research frost one and excite and then this is the card you get when not if but when you die you get to choose a you know compensation card this one's got exhaust which means you play it once and then it disappears for that particular thing. Uh, you're going to start off with 55 health and 4 energy. Uh, the Scholar has a special ability of gain 2 energy whenever a card is upgraded. Uh, in this game, Mori Carta, you... Pretty simple premise. You swipe left or you swipe right. Let's go! So, the entire concept of the game is about swiping left and right. And that begins at the very beginning as well. Where, you have to choose, do you want to fight this boss? Uh, that might be because you like the reward, that you want to fight it, or maybe you don't like it. This one's trade three cards from your deck for new cards of the higher rarity. I don't really like that. I'll swipe left. The Bounty Hunter. This one lets me split two cards. Uh, I don't have that many cards that are great to split at the moment. Sure, I might get some. This one's pretty good to split. And if I swipe left here, you know, there's only one left. So that's often a, a risk-taking part of the game. Do you swipe left and hope you get better stuff? Or do you just swipe right and say it's good enough? I'm going to say it's good enough. Uh, splitting a card, we'll, we'll see it when we get there. Uh, you can also click on the boss to see their particular cards. So these are the cards that are going to shuffle into your deck. And then the basic concept of each fight is you go through your deck and then you shuffle your deck, but sometimes you draw their cards. Uh, their cards are bad. How bad is this deck? It's it's handleable. Um, as long as I have energy, I can escape most of the bad stuff. So, sure, we'll fight the bounty. Now, even though there's a bunch of basic trash in the way, uh, this game's pretty hard. Uh, the trash can definitely get you good. So on each one, I want to make sure to carefully read what the enemies have shuffled into the deck. So here, at some point, I'm going to draw a spring trap. And if I do, I better have four energy to spend, swipe right, or I'll have to take the zero energy option and take four wound and discard two cards off the top. And you don't regenerate health points in between uh, the trash. So. You're gonna get slowly whittled away. So what I want to make sure is I have four energy at this point, you know, always ideally. And then this card's a slow card at the end, which is always on the bottom. Definitely want to have two energy for that, otherwise I'm gonna take four wound. Also, this one's pretty bad because you discard two cards off the top of your deck, but sometimes that's good because sometimes you're gonna be at the bottom of your deck, the slow slice will be on the bottom, and then you can just take the four and then not have to worry about the slow slice. It's gonna be really tough to spend the four plus the two energy each cycle. Uh, so, we'll see how realistic that is. Uh, in this case, I am going to upgrade, so I'll swipe right here. Uh, my special Scholar ability is gain 2 energy whenever a card is upgraded, so generally the Scholar is going to spend the early first phase upgrading their cards, and then uh, the cards will get better, and then you can play them. 
So I'll spend the four energy to not take four and discard two here. I'll upgrade this. Excite. And then pay here. And you'll note that basically this first phase, and then you shuffle your deck, during the first phase, all I did was I managed to upgrade my cards a little bit and like have one energy better than I started. That's actually a pretty good result. Uh, anyways, now I'm going to start playing... Paying this, 2 energy for 5 armor. Note that the armor goes away at the end of the turn. This will allow me to tank the spring trap and then discard 2 cards. This is a really unfortunate card to have drawn. I mean, I don't have 4 energy, so I can't swipe this. But because the deck remaining has 2 good cards and 1 bad card, guaranteed to be on the bottom, I'm always going to, you know, discard the 2 good cards... Not take the damage, but you can see I didn't make much progress. In fact, I made reverse progress this particular shuffle cycle. I'm now only down to one energy. So, the order you draw things, really important. Uh, here I'll swipe right on this. I know I need two energy at the very bottom. So, upgrading gives me two energy. Here I can either... Gain the 5 block, or upgrade, and then gain 2 energy to play for the last one. So, alright, we'll do this. You can see, you could actually end up taking a surprisingly large amount of damage even on the first small boss. Uh, because the spring trap is so bad, like, I've gotta pay the mana for it, so... I think I just upgrade, get the energy in case I draw it, I drew it. Don't have the energy to pay this, so... You gotta get more energy. Don't worry, we'll get ourselves out of this energy cycle at some point, hopefully. I've upgraded both of those cards to the, uh, to the max at this point. This particular fight with this particular character, it looks like the deck is net energy positive. If I were to like, oh, here we go. Finally, I have the energy to play the Research Flame 4 to just deal 15. This guy only has 14 up. So we got through that at minimal cost, you know, minimal cost being I didn't actually lose health. It's really easy to lose health in the trash. Okay, so I can either swap, trade one card from our deck for a new card of higher rarity, but I think the beginning cards are pretty good. Uh, or I can select one rare card from one options. It's kind of tough to get those things where you only get one out of one because sometimes the card you get isn't that good. I don't think this card is that good, but you know, on the flip side, on the plus side, it's at minimum not bad because I can always pay the zero energy cost for no effect. So adding cards which have a zero energy for no effect is not bad because it's always like at worst neutral. Uh, this one, after you upgrade a card, upgrade that card to the maximum level. So, uh, and this is an exhaust side, so I can do that exactly once. So that might push me towards like a specific upgrade deck style. There's similar to Slay the Spire, theoretically, uh, multiple deck options that you can do. So looking at this deck, uh, this enemy, they shuffled a ball and chain where I have to spend all of the energy. So this is like called the concussion type thing where if you have big energy, you're going to have to spend it all down. So, like, no matter how infinite your deck gets eventually, there's often going to be enemies which will have direct counters to it. It's going to be way worse than this, by the way. Uh, so, you can never have too unfair a deck, and sometimes your deck will be so, you know, unfair, but the enemy has such a good counter that you die anyway. So, you got to build your deck really carefully. Uh, that's a lot to say early on. Anyways, what was I going to say here? Uh, so I know at one point I'm going to have to spend all of my energy, so it's kind of good to keep my energy low. So if it's good to keep my energy low, I might be okay spending the 4 here, whereas most of the time I wouldn't. Like in the previous fight, I would just swipe left on this guy. But since this card is a pay X card, I might as well go down to 0. At the end, I'm going to have to pay 6. I'm going to have to save all the way up to 6 energy, otherwise I'm going to take 6 damage. That's pretty insane, so the most common way to counter this is I'm going to be playing the gain 5 block card. Uh, because getting 6 energy when I have to, like, at some point, unknown when I'm going to get the ball and chain. Like, it could be ball and chain and then bludgeon. Uh, although, I could just take the 6 and then gain the 6 and then pay the 6 here, but... 
Look, basically, I'm going to be taking some pain here. So I want to get out of here as fast as possible. So rapid research to upgrade the next card. Uh, this will upgrade the research flame all the way to research flame four. So I'll just have to play this card twice. I got the ball and chain. I will take two. Gain up to two. We got the sword in hand. Uh, I will gain the three armor? So basically there's two paths. I can upgrade this and then I can excite, get up to seven, and then pay the six. And then I'll have an upgrade. Or I can pay the two here, excite. So basically I can end this phase at one health loss uh, and three energy. Or I can end it at one energy and um, zero health loss. But this upgrade, I'll I'll have this upgraded so it's better in the future. So often, there is no escaping pain. So you can see, like even though it's just swipe left or right. Oh, I forgot that upgrades both of them. Oh, that's a better card than I thought. I thought it upgraded only the next upgrade card, but it upgrades all of them this cycle. Okay, cool. Okay, well, we're about to take some pain, but what can you do? In this case, if I swipe left on Ball and Chain, then I will swipe left again and take 6 damage. Or I can swipe right, take the 6, and then gain the 6, and then go into the next phase at 0. So basically I can go into... So I, here's the choices, I can either take 2 and have... Take 8 and have 2 energy, or I can take six and have zero energy. I think uh, best is going to be to take eight. And then hope that the research flame comes after I generate some energy. So, painful, but gotta make these tough calls. It's kind of like constantly playing triage. So here, I will take, I will gain the energy and then hope that I draw research flame before I draw... No, hmm. I actually think I'll take the safe route here. I'll swipe left on Research Frost, which means I'm guaranteed to make it through this phase taking zero damage. Then, if I draw a ball and chain, I'll take no damage, I gain the energy anyways, and then I can kill it here. And then if I hadn't drawn it in that order, you know, I at least survived the round, and then the next phase around, I managed to go again. So you can see, big options, big choices. Okay. I get to either select one common defensive card from three options or one common card from three options. Do I want defense? I've got an upgrader. I've already got a pretty big defense card. I think I will take a common card where there's more upgrade options, perhaps. So this is like any common card. Uh, this one lets me gain five energy but give the enemy five block, which is pretty good. Or gain six block. Which is pretty good. That's a pretty good card, but I think I'm gonna go for the next one. Maybe I'll get a upgrade option. Oh look, it's an upgrade option. Precipitation. So I can either gain two energy and two block, which is pretty good, or upgrade for six energy, which is very expensive, into a card that generates five energy or nine block for one. Not great, because this doesn't have multi-upgrades, and my deck upgrades something to a max level, but still a decent card i'll swipe right just because you know the last card even though it might be even better it could be bad this one's not great uh you spend all of your energy to gain 13 block which is good for a deck that has uh, tries not to generate too much energy because then you ha might have zero energy and then you just spend it for 13 block or you can always just do nothing so not a bad card but pretty specific card you want all right uh, this one looks like some sp special effect where it shuffled a neutral bonus effect in. But the guards... Oh, this is a dangerous one. Gang up. You either pay one to take four, or you pay zero to take one, but then there will be more of this card in the future. And that's really painful when you, like, duplicate the cards and they keep coming up. 
I got a stagger, which is either you pay two to make the opponent gain six, or you take six, which is very painful, and at the end, you're gonna take six, or pay six. This deck can't generate that much energy. Now on the bright side, there's a one-time catch lightning, which uh, either permanently adds a lightning in a bottle, which twins the next one card, replacing a side with duplicate. Interesting. Or you can just take 20. Or gain 20. So, that's a nice effect. Because this is particularly brutal, what's about to come. So, question right away, do you swipe right on rapid research? If you swipe right, you might immediately get staggered and then ganged up. If I swipe left, if I draw gang up I, or stagger, I can pay and not take massive damage. Which is why I'm not too big a fan of Rapid Research. It's quick, which means it always shows up at the top, uh, but, you know, you might actually need some energy for later. So, I will swipe left, so that if I draw a red card, I don't take that much pain. Wow, look at that. I drew both of the red cards. But fortunately, we were prepared for that. Uh, I believe the max health is it's 55, so here I'm going to gain 14. It's, it's a good effect. So I upgrade my cards. I get that sword in hand. Oh. Oh, I can actually pay to upgrade precipitation to get the super card. If I do that, I have the two armor to take some bite off of that. All right. This one's tough enough that I'm going to be willing to take the pain. And you gotta know when you need to be willing to take the pain. Because if you just keep paying for everything, you are actually going to eventually lose. Uh, it's the big part of the triage of this one. Like, what can you afford to pay for? Uh, what can you not afford to pay for? And I think, once again, I can't pay for the four here in rapid research. And then, now I don't take the six. I can pay one to gain the nine. That'll basically defend me from both of these. That seems good. And then I can build up a little bit here. Still take one, but, you know, at least generate some energy. Now at this point, like, I've upgraded both of these cards naturally, so... Paying four to upgrade right to the end seems very foolish. So it looks like the win condition is going to be either playing Research Flame four times, or upgrading this and playing it three times, so I might as well upgrade it. I'll take another four, because having this duplicate is still too painful. But the cards that duplicate, you do want to figure out when exactly to stop paying the more expensive side. I'll let the opponent gain the armor, because the armor will go away. I'll gain the energy this time. And then I will take the six, but my armor defends it. Both sides' armor goes away. I'm in a much better spot because I have a lot of energy now, uh, and all my stuff has been prepared. I'll gain the 9. Um, so I'm going to take a total of 16 potentially this cycle, so that's 16. Then I don't have to pay anything for the mana costs here. And I can actually not have the opponent get shielded. So, interesting decisions on, like, whether or not to gain the mana, or the the armor, whether or not to take the damage on gang up, how much to upgrade stuff before, and whatnot. It's just that you can easily see a position where someone would have lost way more health to the guards than I did. I could even just easily die to them, and I've done that before. I already tossed my attack card, so now I can... Uh, and I actually don't have armor this time, so we're going to pay the two, make the opponent gain armor. I will 
gain the seven. This time around, I'll let the duplicate occur. Or will I? Yeah. No. Yeah, that's fine. Because we're killing them next cycle. I gain the energy. Take the six. There is a lot of dependency on the draw order, uh, especially on certain bosses and whatnot. You thought that was tough. Uh, you know, things get even more horrific. That's part of the joy of being able to mitigate the randomness, I guess. The game's all about, you know, it's gonna suck, but are you prepared? Okay, so we got a one-time deal 10 damage, so that's just always useful. But I'm gonna see if we can get something better. Unstable Fireball, which uh, you either randomly take 10 damage or deal th or, or take 3, or you pay 5 for the guaranteed 10. I don't really like that, so we'll go for the last option. Aether Arrow, which upgrades to... Where you have to pay to upgrade or spend energy in order to deal damage. Pay to upgrade or spend energy to deal damage. And then two deal 12. Well, that's pretty good. I'll take that. Acceptable. X uh, costs are always really dangerous because, you know. Might be rough. Alright, this thing just shuffled a bunch of cards into my deck. Let's see what horrors are here. Concussive blow, where you either spend all of your energy and take zero, so this is the option which you hate to see if you have a bunch of energy, or pay zero to take six. So you can always take zero, but you might get rid of all of your energy. This one, if you have a bunch of energy, you can get rid of this horrible card, because uh, otherwise you have to take four and make the opponent gain four. Uh, two, to protect yourself from four is really good. Spines, you know, that's, that's a lot of annoying taxes, but it might be too painful to pay two to save two each time. So you definitely want to pay four, for the slice, so you gotta pay the slice tax. I don't know if I'll have enough to pay the spines tax. I'm gonna eventually take a bunch of damage. This one's rough. Uh, I think I, because there's an X card here, and because I have a bunch of cards that upgrade now, after you upgrade a card, upgrade that card to the maximum. So I'll take a bunch of pain in the first phase and then we'll do better in the next one. And then Optimally, I... Okay, so I'm going to take the Spines damage because there's worse in the deck. Take it, take it. Cool, this little mini benefit was used... Oh, no! Don't get the swipe right, so I have to swipe... Uh, don't get the swipe left, so I have to swipe right. Spend all of my energy. Now I don't have the uh, two for Slice, so we got to take this damage. Uh, we got to do the four and the four. Painful, painful. There's still a slice in there. There's a concussive blow as well. So I'll actually swipe right on the spines and then hope not to get the slice. But here's the slice. Here's concussive blow. I certainly don't want to take six. So we got to spend all of our energy on this. Can't upgrade that. All right, painful. Pay the two, don't take four. Pay the three, don't take six. Oof, don't have two. Don't have two. Don't have four. The pain. Uh, what's up next? Spines and spines. I think I need the energy, so I'm going to take the two here. You can see if you get caught in a loop where you don't have energy, you take a bunch of pain. So here I have the two armor, I can actually not take the two. Another painful round. Finally we'll make some progress. Uh, I just have to play Research Flame again in order to kill it. Fortunately we drew it in the order of dealing damage and then Forgotten Tide, but I'll still take four here. Uh, I know there's a Concussive Blow in here, so I need to not hoard too much mana, so we can just keep paying the Spines. I would love to have the two in order to get the block, but who knows if the concussive blow will come up. But, you know, you, you weigh the odds, and it's like, I should probably be... Uh, because there's slices coming up, I should just take the spines damage. 
And then, if I get Research Frost, I can gain the armor. Uh, this armor will protect me from all this pain coming up. Ow, ow. Unfortunately, armor. Alright, man, this uh, basic monster sure is dealing a bunch of damage to me. Alright, that 12 protects me from a lot, but if I draw the attack card, I won't have the energy to pay for it. Alright, now we have the energy. Very brutal basic enemy there. Okay, reward, uh, one rare card out of three, or one common offense. Generally, the rare cards are cooler. They, like, guide your deck in certain directions. So let's see. This one lets me spend X in order to gain energy equal to your block. So this is for a block deck where you have a lot of block, and then you gain a bunch of energy based on your block. The other side loses all the block, and then you gain block equal to your energy. Um, That doesn't necessarily fit this deck yet though it's like it's kind of adjacent i did get a block card another rapid research i don't want another one of those decline reflexive teleport after you take damage reshuffle the deck ends when you reshuffle and it's quick really interesting card actually this will change the deck quite a bit and it's actually somewhat useful because the idea is I can shuffle early, or I can upgrade early, shuffle, and then I get the upgraded versions quick. I can actually swipe left there, not take it, uh, and then get like a small bonus if I do. But we'll, we'll eventually get rid of one of those. Basically you can change one of your cards to either fast or slow, or not quick. Uh, so now when I take damage, reshuffle the deck. Which is sometimes terrible, by the way. Hilariously. So, there are four cards that are going to make me reshuffle. Continuing on. Where was I? So the problem with playing Rapid Research is I could easily draw one of these bad cards and then not have the mana to pay for it, and then just shuffle the deck, and basically we got nowhere. So I'm going to have to sh swipe left on Rapid Research. Uh, then, now I don't take four, which is good. And then I don't take two, and discard the top one of my deck, which is presumably quite good at this point. Oh, that's painful. Guess I'll take six and reshuffle. Alright, so now it's basically the... Exact same as I started, except now I have four less energy. Okay, I guess we'll take four and then reshuffle. Hi, Reflexive Teleport. You are rocking me. Alright, if I swipe left, I will die. Okay, if I swipe left, I'll die. Exciting. We're right on the, uh... Border of life and death here. Goodbye, my top turn. Oh. Wow, that was really lucky. Hmm. <sighs> I mean, I'm dead on the first boss, so... Lull me. Oh. Yeah. It's time! And that's Mori Karda! Uh, a very, very tough game, where sometimes it feels like, you know, you play well and you still lose anyways. Uh, this is one of those cases. I, I thought I did pretty reasonably. Hard game. It's like, wow, is this really all I show? Just me losing on the very first mini boss? Alright, well, let me know if you liked it and you want to see more, I guess. That'll make the video at least quite short. But suffice it to say, uh, more bosses shuffle in crazier things. They do more stuff to counter you in the future. 
uh, you can get some better cards. Uh, you might think you're insane when you generate 100 energy, but then you meet the boss, which uh, deals damage. I'm crying! Makes you spend X all the time. So, challenging game, all right? Challenging game. It's time. I've accepted it. I, I lose. Uh, so, when you die, when you die, uh, you got one option of... I think this one's pretty good. Gain four block. I'll take it. Wow, that's really good. Gain two energy. So, there you have it. We lost! But we go again! 